Hello, Gumptown, and today we're here with Director Murphy and Chief Finley. Director Murphy is Director of the Public Safety Department for Montgomery, and Chief Finley is the Chief of the Montgomery Police Department. How y'all doing today? We're good. Well, thanks for being with us today. Now, we'll start with you, Director. You know, tell us your role as the, um, the Director of Public Safety, and what do you do, and how you got connected with Chief Finley. All right, sounds good. Um, actually, I, my background is U.S. Secret Service, and I worked uh, with Governor Riley for uh, four years, Director of Public Safety for the state. But this position came into existence when Todd Strange realized that he had 27 people reporting to him, mm -hmm. agency heads, and that was overwhelming, and, and, and he couldn't get out to do his job as mayor um, with handling the day-to-day -day stuff with 27 departments. So mm -hmm. he wanted to, to clump together or bring together uh, like organizations, and so mm -hmm. um, he went from 27 to about nine cabinet members now, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> he asked me to, to, to work with public safety. So um, my biggest goal was to increase the brain trust of these four agencies that, that, that work together. Um, they cooperated well together, but they didn't collaborate as well together. So from leadership to crisis management to budget issues to how we order uniforms and, and saving money on those kind of things. What we've tried to do is, is I stand back and try to look at the big picture. Uh, Chief Finley runs his department. Chief Jordan runs the fire department. They do the day-to-day. -day. Uh, that's not my, my job, but to try to look more holistically. So one of the biggest things we've always tried to do with public safety is connect with the community. And the community is who we serve. But mm -hmm. I think sometimes you can lose sight of that in any of these agencies, but particularly public safety agencies, lose lose sight of the fact that we serve the, the, the public. Mm -hmm. And certainly in our history in Montgomery, we know that in the 50s and 60s, there was a huge disconnect between a large portion of the community um, that, that the public safety departments <clears throat> served and, and, uh, and, and the community. So, we improved on that over the years, but mm -hmm. in the 70s there was still trouble, uh, particularly with the police department and mm -hmm. uh, the Whitehurst case and, uh, and uh, Todd Road incident, things mm -hmm. like that. So we have known for a, a long time the value and the importance of connecting with the community and understanding the needs of the community. Right. <clears throat> so when it came time to um, choose a, a new police chief, one of the things that we really looked at, we wanted to be educated, we wanted to be experienced, <clears throat> we wanted to have those expertise, mm -hmm. but we, we wanted somebody that had a solid record of connecting with the community and understanding the community they serve. And we saw that in Ernie Finley. I went up to Atlanta, I talked to a lot of his colleagues, but I talked to city council people, I talked to community activists, I mm -hmm. talked to all kinds of different mm -hmm. people, and that was his what he was really known for. We wanted that to translate into Montgomery. And so, yes, he's got 28 years experience, or 29 now. Uh, yes, he has a master's degree. Yes, he, uh, FBI National Academy graduate. All those things. Yes, he was a deputy chief for Atlanta, which is a l much larger department. He has all the credentials, but mm -hmm. he has the heart. Yeah. That's really what we're trying to do. And, and that's, you can kind of take it from there, but that's why we were choosing Ernie. I don't know why Ernie chose us, but... Uh. Well, you know, Ernie chose uh, Montgomery because I'm the chief. And, uh, and it, it is a, uh, for me, it's an accomplishment and it's a great job to be the chief of uh, this this great city. Uh, but but uh, director, just kind of set it in a nutshell. And what I believe in is, is three things. And, and, and I'm real clear on fighting crime. And, mm -hmm. and it has always been clear on fighting crimes based on the data, based on statistics. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is internal, and I think that the internal is what really guides me in, in the city right now, and that's the community, to really have those everlasting connections with the, with the community, and that's mm -hmm. that internal, because that's very important. The mm -hmm. other uh, key to that is that is that, that internal, right, the mm -hmm. sensitivity um, nature of the great men and women that are part of uh, MPD is to make sure that we embrace them, we give them love and attention as well. And I think that's so, so important uh, that we embrace and that we we really uh, identify the needs of our internal 
uh, customers, that's the that's our employees, that's both sworn and, and unsworn. And so we when we collaborate, we put all that together, fighting crime, mm -hmm. dealing with the community, and also making sure that our internal um, uh, officers are engaged and civilians and not. And I think that uh, we are moving in, in that right uh, uh, fashion. And mm -hmm. It's all about that communication. So when we talk about fighting crime, when we talk about uh, developing relationship partnerships with the feds, the states, the county, we got to communicate. We mm -hmm. got to make sure that our mission is their mission as well, but everybody understands everybody's role and and be subservient at times mm -hmm. as far as if the community want to take the lead on this, the county or the state or whatever, want to take the lead on something, as long as everybody has to get in the game and we're working on that common cause. Okay. The other thing that I have to say real quick um, is um, getting involved in the community. And I think that's the, the best job in the world, mm -hmm. but also uh, be a great listener. Mm -hmm. Because the community, every community meeting that I go to, and allow them to take the lead in some of the conversation, that makes me even better mm -hmm. because I listen to them and I see how I can incorporate some of the things that they want mm -hmm. to be done. That might be visibility, that might be um, uh, trying to create a community watch mm -hmm. or a community patrol. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say no. The more eyes and ears that we have in, in serving their community is going to help us out. So uh, I look forward to each and every day that I get an opportunity to be in the streets or my guys have opportunity to patrol um, their areas and we collaborate with mm -hmm. different organizations uh, to really make um, a government that much safer. That's great and this ties into our next question because you, like I said you're engaged with the community and one thing that you implemented was community policing. Now describe the impact that you see with community policing. How has it affected neighborhoods, good or bad? Well, you know, the, the way I look at it is that uh, Montgomery, and I said that from day one here, they get it right. And it's all, you know, it's all about a little fine tuning. But you know, I did twenty nine, close to twenty nine years in Atlanta, and that transition from Atlanta and Montgomery, we get it right here. I mean, they got the neighborhood next door. They, they the cops unit. Um, um, the staff uh, from top to bottom engaged. Mm -hmm. The only thing that, that I did, just a little manipulation, just a little bit, um, as far as just to making it uh, encourage everybody to be a, mm -hmm. a community uh, policing officer. And what that is, is it's a philosophy. Mm -hmm. So everybody has it in, the beat officer has it in, but I want more more than the beat officers that have that philosophy. I need the, the personnel in uh, criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. I need the personnel in these other units, administrative units, to uh, be a community oriented or have that philosophy about giving, about being that servant leader out there. So I think that a little tweaking, mm -hmm. but for the most part, when we do our community walks, when we um, partner with the community to do community walks, it, it, it brings in um, great dividends. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have seen in the past that um, doing those community park walk and talks, um, outreach in the community, um, the dividends are, uh, and the bank deposit are, is when they call us when there's a situation in their community, mm -hmm. or uh, I know that last year we had a, uh, a, a serious crime that was committed, the community called us, they came out there and they pointed out mm -hmm. what we need to be, how mm -hmm. we need to do it, and we That's were able good. to make some successful um, uh, arrests. But the other thing is this open communication. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Uh, we're not going to solve all, all the problems in the community, but what we can do is have open, honest communications. And one mm -hmm. of the things that Director Murphy always talk about, in which we espouse, is transparency. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, the ugly. We're going to tell it. And mm -hmm. we got to tell it because mm -hmm. if not, is we holding back and we we are playing, uh, we playing games and we don't believe mm -hmm. in playing games. We, we believe in being transparent and open and, and honest with the community, um, and that's how we're going to be successful in, in uh, addressing community issues. Let me comment on mm -hmm. that too because I think the chief made a really good point. He, sometimes he's too humble with this uh, park walk and talk that he initiated. There's a great way we have definitely seen an increase since he's been here of, of the community reaching out to us and, and talking to us about crime and talking mm -hmm. to us. But it also allows um, the community to see police in a different 
light, mm -hmm. um, whether it's playing basketball on occasion or just sitting on a porch talking to someone. Because, you know, the whole Department of Public Safety, it starts with a, a call to 911. And that mm -hmm. Department of Communications is under public safety. People don't call 911 to ask how you're doing, how your family is. They're in crisis. Mm -hmm. And they typically call for police when they're in crisis. And so if the only time the community sees police officers is if it's in crisis, and that crisis may be that you're getting a speed ticket. You know, it doesn't have to be huge, but it, there's, there's some kind of drama going on when you have an interaction with the police. Then, then that's kind of where you put them in that category. Mm -hmm. And what I think Chief um, Finley has been so successful at, and, and his staff through his leadership, is bridging that gap to make sure that the community know that these are men and women, flesh and blood, and they have families, and they have uh, hopes and dreams, and, and, and those type of things, and that we're all human, and we're all working on the same direction. And so I think this park walk and talk, and community-oriented policing, and mm -hmm. neighborhood associations, and as he said, uh, next door, the social media, of course, now, all of those are uh, attempts and, and avenues to connect with the people that we serve. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes. Now, um, my next question, um, you know, St. John AME Church, they just recently held a law day program that focused on law awareness, especially to our youth. Um, and I know, Director, you were at that program. I believe you were too, Chief. But um, what did y'all think about the program or... Do you think we need more programs like this, and are programs like that important to the community? I think they're great. I, I've been to them uh, the last several years since they, they started having them because, um, one, it puts us, again, in another environment instead of a confrontation on mm -hmm. the street and things like that. It puts us in an environment, a, a church environment. But it was so encouraging to see our judges there, our district attorney there, um, uh, certainly a, a huge representation of, of the police department and the city in a venue, in, a, in an environment <clears throat> that was non-confrontational and that kind of epitomized partnerships and mm -hmm. epitomized connecting with the community. And we want our young people to see us, not as always the enforcers, uh, but we want our older um, senior citizens are, are more uh, experienced people in life to see us. We're different than the police department of the 1960s or 70s, and, and uh, that there, there can be change. And, and, you know, we'll make mistakes. We're human. Um, but as the chief said, we'll try to be transparent about that, and we will try to uh, fix that mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your perspective? What I see on that, I think that's the beginning, and that was the third annual uh, Law Day event. And when we talk about um, having events like that geared towards the youth, the teenagers and, and, the, um, and the young adults, I think that's great. I think that to see us from a, a different perspective. I know that in this uh, particular summer that's coming up, we're going to partner uh, with the Boy Scouts of America and some other local law enforcement uh, departments in the River Region to be a part of a camp mm -hmm. and to really spend a week uh, 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 a week with these young adults, I guess, or these young children age of 12 to 18, where they see law enforcement in a different light. We're going to mentor them. Uh, part of the, uh, the curriculum is building character and leadership. Mm -hmm. and so we look forward to being invited, first of all, but to be a part of that. But with the uh, MPD, we have, uh, we've been doing this for like the last... Let's maybe. give a plug to our council. Several of them oh, committed oh, oh, to finances absolutely, absolutely. to uh, support that. And, and sponsors thank you very kids. much, because uh, I'd be throwing, throwing them under the bus. But the council um, has been a great supporter of this, as well as the public safety uh, division. Um, so the fire department, uh, the PD, as well as the council is committed to the youth in their districts. And so we look forward to being a part of that uh, that Boy Scouts of America camp. But what we're doing on the PD is that for the last, I want to say 10 years, they have uh, a junior police academy mm. where we uh, identify uh, 30 rising um, sixth graders. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, embrace them on this leadership camp for about a week. So what we're um, doing this year is expanding that to two additional weeks and that we are focusing that citywide. Primarily, we're looking at um, the, the youth in the Montgomery Housing Authority community, 
uh, and so we are looking at those communities and those surrounding communities uh, uh, around those uh, 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 Montgomery Housing Authority community outlets. So we are we are really encouraged on how do we engage the youth and keep that on a continuous basis. The last thing. Uh, that we did this year mm -hmm. is our partner uh, ship with uh, MPX, okay. uh, where we identify a a cluster of schools from um, elementary, middle to high school, where we had um, conversation with these uh, with these students with the permission of the principal uh, for about um, a half a year. Mm -hmm. And part of that conversation is how do you engage with law enforcement? Right. And so the first maybe class or two where we had that hour set of instruction it was very touch and go it was tense after the third or fourth encounter we the we see the light in the eyes as far as them coming forth having great conversation with us relaxed conversation and that's what it's all about we want uh, the the youth and this the, the people in general to feel comfortable with us knowing everybody's role long as you know your role, you know where you stand. And mm -hmm. so having those conversations, those in-depth conversations with our young folks really is going to make a difference on how um, Montgomery PD, Public Safety Division, really um, change the dynamics in these communities that we serve throughout mm -hmm. the city. So and one other um, uh, partnership with MPS is through the Career Academies. And we mm -hmm. have seven or eight um, interns that are working this summer being paid. Wow. Um, to mm -hmm. and they will get a tour of the police department and work with the police department for a little while, then fire department and communications. And so there are a lot of ways that we're reaching out to to engage. That's awesome. Yes. Um do you two have any final remarks you would like to share with Gump Town? Well this is gonna be a busy summer and uh, had um, a great conversation with uh, Director Murphy on Utilizing our manpower to to really uh, you know be uh, efficient and effective mm -hmm. as far as serving uh, the community. So we are looking at some creative ways uh, to continue to serve the the public as best as we can. Mm -hmm. Utilizing our uh, administrative personnel, utilizing our cops unit to really have cops on the dots in those communities where we need to provide better service. Uh, more quality service, and that's what we're about, providing quality service to our, our great residents in the uh, city of Montgomery. Good. And I would just say I appreciate Gumtown by um, giving us another avenue to communicate with the community, and, and we would always emphasize if you need public safety, if you have a concern for public safety, let us know, whether it's police, fire, any of us, um, how we can serve you better. We may not be able to do everything that everybody wants, but the partnerships are the key. The more ways that we can partnership, the more ways we can get that message out. And we appreciate your time and, and your uh, venue to, to be able to do that, to connect with the community. Well, that's great. We want to thank you so much, yes. Director Murphy and Chief Finley. You're tuning in to Gumtown TV. Stay connected. All right. Thank you.